How can you become a cloud engineer with no experience? The truth is that if you're a beginner, you won't have real world job experience to get hired. But there is one thing you do have, which you can use as leverage to your advantage and stand out from people all over the world who all want to become cloud engineers. And that my friends is time. Now I know what you are thinking, Soleiman, what do you mean I can use my time to get hired? How does this even make sense? Listen, I was exactly in your position a few years ago and I had a full-time job, but still made the switch to become a cloud engineer. I didn't even have the time and I was able to do it. Now I work for myself as a cloud engineer. I have my own cloud consulting business and I run two YouTube channels. I work from wherever I want and how businesses design, build and operate cloud systems. I'm not going to just tell you how to do it. I'm going to give you the keys on how to become a cloud engineer with no experience, what to focus on, what to learn, what projects to build, and how to get your first cloud engineer role. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy because nothing worth having comes easy, but with the right plan, focus and grit, it's totally possible. Now, before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more to help you make your cloud move. Now, the first step to become a cloud engineer with no experience is understanding the cloud basics. You have to know what cloud computing is, both from a technical and business perspective. Along with its value proposition, ask yourself these questions. What is the cloud? Why is it important? Why should businesses even move to the cloud? What are the benefits and drawbacks of the cloud? These are vital concepts that you have to grasp. How can you become a cloud engineer if you don't understand why the role even exists? Now, don't worry, you don't even have to Google any of this because I know you won't. So instead, I'm going to tell you all of this. Cloud refers to cloud computing resources such as storage, servers, analytics, AI, which are all accessed over the internet. A cloud server is located in data centers all over the world. By using cloud computing, companies don't have to manage physical servers in big warehouses or run software applications on their own machines. They just rent their computing needs from cloud providers like AWS. Cloud computing provides scalability on demand. This means businesses can scale up or down their computing resources based on their needs without having to invest in physical infrastructure. It reduces the cost of managing and maintaining IT systems. The cloud allows businesses to quickly deploy new applications, scale resources to meet business needs and innovate faster. So now that we know what cloud computing is and why it's important, the next step to becoming a cloud engineer with no experience is understanding the role of a cloud engineer. A cloud engineer is the superhero of the cloud world. They are responsible for creating a blueprint of the cloud system, designing and setting it up, which is for implementing and keeping it running smoothly, managing, along with making sure the cloud system is running securely and have monitoring in place. To me, a cloud engineer is a jack of all trades who does a bit of everything. They handle the architecture of the cloud system, i.e. planning the layout of the cloud system. They work on the automation, making repetitive tasks run on their own, CICD, which is continuous integration and continuous deployment, which is like the conveyor belt for software development, infrastructure as code, which means managing your cloud infrastructure through code instead of setting it up manually and working with clients by understanding their needs and building solutions for them. Now, being a cloud engineer is by far the best cloud role to start with as you get exposed to every part of the cloud delivery lifecycle. Now, the next step to becoming a cloud engineer with no experience is understanding the cloud fundamental. These fundamentals are networking, operating systems, virtualization, and databases. Now, think of networking like the system of roads and highways that connect different cities. Just as these roads allow vehicles to travel to and from different places, 
In cloud computing, networking allows computers and devices to communicate and share data with each other. This can happen over short distances, like within an office building or even vast distances, like across the world. Next, we have operating systems. An operating system, also known as an OS, is like the manager of a large office building. It's responsible for ensuring that everything in that building, or in this case, the computer, runs smoothly and efficiently. This includes managing resources like memory and processing power and making sure different software applications can operate effectively without interfering with each other. Now, cloud platforms like AWS offer various operating system options for virtual machines and other services. We have images, which are specific VM configurations tailored to workloads like computer optimized or memory optimized. Cloud engineers need to be able to choose the right operating system and configuration for the specific task, ensuring performance, compatibility, and security. Next, we have a virtualization. Now imagine virtualization as a method of creating virtual versions of something physical. Think of a large physical space like a gym being divided into multiple smaller rooms using partitions. Each partition room can be used for different activities simultaneously, one for basketball game, one for yoga class, and so on. In computing, virtualization does something similar with the computer hardware. Virtualization in the cloud allows a single physical server to be divided into multiple virtual servers or instances. Each of these virtual instances act like a separate computer, capable of running its own applications and operating systems. And finally, we have databases. A database is like a library where you store and organize books, i.e. data. Just as a library catalog helps you find specific book among thousands, a database management system helps you store, retrieve, and manage data efficiently. In technology and cloud computing, databases are essential for storing information in a structured way so that it can be easy easily accessed, managed, and updated. When we talk about databases in the cloud specifically, it's like having this library or database not in a physical building, but in a virtual space accessible over the internet. Now, if you wanna get started with the cloud and become a cloud engineer, then you should check out my Cloud Engineer Academy, where I provide you with a structured way of learning and guiding you to go from zero to cloud engineer hero covering the fundamentals, the tools, and the technologies to learn and become a cloud engineer through self-paced videos, hands-on projects, and live workshops. Not just that, inside the Cloud Engineer Academy private Discord, you will gain access to a global cloud community, job opportunities, interview preparation, and so much more. Come join the fastest growing cloud community in the world. Right now, it's at a 50% discount for pre-order, so move fast before the launch price. Go to cloudengineeracademy.io to find out more or check the link in the description of this video. So once you are comfortable with the core cloud fundamental concepts, it's essential to practice with key tools like Git and Bash. Git is a distributed version control system that tracks changes in files, specifically useful in collaborative programming projects. It allows multiple contributors, i.e. software engineers, to work simultaneously without conflict and keeps a history of changes enabling reversion to previous states if needed. This functionality is especially crucial for continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines, i.e. CI-CD. Then we have Bash, also known as Born Again Shell. This is a command line interface used across Linux, Mac OS, and Windows systems. It enables cloud engineers to write scripts for automating tasks such as software installation, file management, and cloud service interactions. Tools like the AWS CLI used within Bash enhance this automation, providing efficient cloud resource management. Moving forward, it's crucial to understand cloud architecture as a cloud engineer. Every project in the cloud computing world involves 
an underlying cloud architecture. Think of cloud architecture as the blueprint of a house, where the architecture details how various components like the rooms in a house interconnect and function together to form the complete cloud solution. Now for beginners, it's important to focus on these key architectural concepts. Firstly, we have high availability. This is like ensuring that there are multiple doors and pathways into a house. So if one is blocked, others are still available. In cloud terms, it means designing systems that remain operational without interruption even during failures. Next, we have scalability. Similar to having a house where you can easily add more rooms as your family grows, scalability in cloud architecture refers to the ability to increase resources to handle growing workloads or users. The next one is fault tolerance. This can be compared to having a backup system in a house like a generator for power outages. In cloud architecture, it means the system can continue operating even when some components fail. Next up, we have disaster recovery. Think of this as having a plan to quickly rebuild your house if it's damaged. In cloud computing, it's about having strategies to recover data and restore system functionality after a major incident. Now, as you progress in your cloud engineering journey, choosing a cloud platform to specialize in is key. And there are three major players in the market to choose from. We have AWS, GCP and Azure. Selecting the right one can seem a little bit challenging, but a practical approach is to focus on the platform with the most opportunities in your geographical area. For many and for myself, AWS is the go-to choice due to its widespread popularity and extensive adoption. Now, each of these platforms offer a free tier or credits, allowing you to experiment and learn without incurring any costs. It's crucial to leverage these offers to gain practical experience. Now, once you've chosen your cloud platform, the next step is to familiarize yourself with its key services. On AWS, for example, some of the most common used services include EC2, which is an elastic compute cloud for virtual servers, IAM, identity and access management for security, VPC, virtual private cloud for networking, RDS, Relational Database Service for databases, Route 53 for DNS, and Lambda for serverless computing, amongst many more. Now, it's beneficial to understand each service and the category it falls under, such as compute, storage, databases, security, or networking. This not only helps in gaining comprehensive understanding of the platform, but also in recognizing how these services interconnect to build effective cloud solutions. The next step is learning the cloud tooling and the cloud tools that you should focus on are Terraform and GitHub Actions, and of course, the cloud platform that we've already mentioned. Terraform is a tool for defining and managing infrastructure using the HashiCorp configuration language, HCL. It's versatile across multiple cloud providers, allowing you to use similar configurations for AWS, Azure, and GCP. Terraform treats infrastructure as code, making changes versionable, auditable, and easily reviewable. Next, we have GitHub Actions, which automates workflows for building, testing, and deploying applications. It's seamlessly integrated with GitHub repositories, and it's vital for continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. Now, each cloud platform offers unique tools like the AWS CLI for AWS, which is essential for managing its specific services. Learning these tools enhances your ability to efficiently manage and deploy cloud infrastructure, making you a more capable and employable cloud engineer. So the big question remains, how do you become a cloud engineer with no experience? And the answer is very simple. You combine everything we discussed so far and you build hands-on projects. This is by far the fastest way to become a cloud engineer, actually building, creating, and experimenting with cloud services. When you have no experience in a role, you need to focus on practical application over theory. Immersing yourself in projects goes beyond theoretical learning. It's about applying concepts in real world scenarios, which often deviate from the textbook example. This hands-on experience is invaluable. And this is because building projects will teach you how to solve problems rather than just memorizing steps. 
you want to build projects that you combine cloud services, Terraform, and GitHub Actions to gain a comprehensive understanding of being a cloud engineer and being able to build projects with the tools and technology. Use your time to build projects and you will be in a cloud engineer role in no time. And don't forget to document what you build. If you want to know what projects to build, then check out the Cloud Engineer Academy to fast track yourself into becoming a cloud engineer. And if not, then do not worry. I will see you on the next video.